Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is the glorious one, Bobby Roode, and you're watching Going In Raw. Hey, friend, Del Steve here. And Larson. Yeah, welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you're going to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve Larson. And available wherever fine podcasts are, be sure to hit that subscribe button or the notify bell next to it on YouTube. Or if you're listening to the show on the podcast on a podcast app, be sure to leave us a rating or a review. It really does help the show. Uh, another good way to support Going In Raw is by hitting us up on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. We have a whole wealth of reward tiers. If you kick us some money, you get something in return. For example, yeah. you could watch this show as a live stream. All of our recaps are available as live streams. We usually get between 40 and 60, 70 people watching. Yeah. And it's a fun group. We uh, uh, have a fun pre-show and a post-show. Uh, it's really great. Uh, we're also available at Pro Wrestling Tees. Now we got we got a bunch of these shirts. I got some new shirts, Larson. Ooh. Look at those shirts right there. Look at that. I've seen them already. I don't need to look at them. I anymore. find it funny. The Golden Shuffle shirt and then a very colorful going in raw shirt. I'm going to say this. Usually, we have not received any confirmation. We we're, we're not we don't have insiders at Pro Wrestling no. Tees. It'd be great if we did, but we don't. Usually, they do a big week long WrestleMania sale. At least they did last week. Big WrestleMania sale last year. Last year, sorry. Um, and so while I would love for you guys to get those shirts right yeah. now, oh yeah, I would prefer you to save some money. Yes, wait. Two weeks or whenever it is, three weeks. Yeah, because those shirts aren't going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. They're right there. We're going to have some more designs. I think we're actually going to debut the new Going In Raw logo. Um, I mean, it's kind of debuted on Twitter through W.S. Fletcher's account mm -hmm. and Robert Stack's mm -hmm. account. But um, we're going to be putting up as shirts before they're actually used on the show. The real launch. The hard launch. <laughs> You're not listening to me, are you? Uh, it's going to be WrestleMania recap. But the logo, the logo will be available as a shirt, WrestleMania week. The week leading up to it. The hard lunch. I heard you. Hard lunch. Hard lunch. Yes. Hard lunch. Anyways, uh, we have um, it's, it's a decent news week. Yeah. We're on the road to Mania. There is, you know, the, the, the top story of the week, of course, without a doubt, Daniel Bryan uh, cleared to return to in-ring competition. Yeah. And, the and so I, I think a lot of people, including myself, were really eager to hear the story or at least, you know, something resembling the story of the backstage machinations that led to his return to the ring. And our first little bit of backstage info comes courtesy of the Wrestling Observer himself, Dave Meltzer, in this week's Observer newsletter. He's got a fantastic rundown. Oh, it's of, like half the newsletter of yeah. recapping uh, the entire saga of Daniel Bryan post-retirement trying to get cleared for a return. Right. So I might as well uh, kick off here. So uh, we all know kind of the general story. About two years ago, he was forced to um, to retire prematurely. Mm -hmm. um, around the time that uh, he was told that, or asked, I guess, by Vince McMahon to retire. According to the newsletter, there's a couple doctors that uh, said to him, probably too soon to do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, Steam thus began his quest to find a way to return to the ring. Yeah. As far as what happened um, just kind of immediately, um, apparently uh, Daniel Bryan um, asked Dr. Joseph Maroon um, to look at him again. He said, well, yeah, he said, uh, send me to whoever you want me to send. Send me to whoever you want to send me to. Yeah. Whoever you trust, send me to those people. And if they tell me no, at least, th at least he gave it an effort. Yeah. And I mean, he'd still go on and wrestle for New Japan probably, but in terms of a return to the WWE, um, he thought, okay, I'll give it one last shot. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work. All right, I got this in my back pocket. I can yeah. always go to New Japan. Yeah. Um, uh, there were some other interesting bits too. The um, so we all kind of knew that the social media back and forth between Cody and Cody Rhodes and oh, yeah. Daniel Bryan was uh, maybe to lead up to something. Was maybe to lead up to the main event of All In, their show on September first, and that original plans for All In were to have that show. After Daniel Bryan's contract with had him, expired, with him in the main event, yeah, yeah, with him, so he could be in the main event. When they kind of figured that there was a really good chance that he would be cleared because of all this new info that he'd been getting from doctors and all that kind of stuff, um, that's when they decided to just pull the trigger on September first. So mm -hmm. that was the day. 
So I guess like his contract was set to expire on that day, so he couldn't yes. have been. Well, I mean, it still, it still is set to expire on that day, right? Yeah, unless he resigns. Yeah, but he wasn't. He wouldn't have been able to. Yeah, make the show. Make the show. So, anyways, I guess the plan initially was for Doctor Joseph Maroon to uh, evaluate Daniel Bryan on March twenty seventh, um, and the 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 day before um, a SmackDown taping at Pittsburgh, um, and it would have been determined then whether he'd be clear or not. But according to the newsletter. Quote, voices from above, likely Vince McMahon, because he's the only one that would think would make this call, um, insisted on the WrestleMania match situation settled this week and not next so they could start building toward whatever angle they needed to for uh, for match this week and presumably announce it next week. So uh, Daniel Bryan flew from, uh, I think, Abu Dhabi um, because his appointment got bumped up a week. So now it was March 19th he would see uh, Joseph Maroon, and then after Maroon did his evaluation and testing, he cleared him. Said, you're good to go. He cleared him. Yeah. Um, some interesting stuff. Yeah, apparently that brought Daniel uh, tears to, mm-hmm. to Daniel Bryan's mm-hmm. eyes. Not surprising. No. He choked up when he was out there on SmackDown doing the speech. I got choked up as well. Same. Um, that was interesting stuff. Um, it was interesting. There was also some other bits that were actually really interesting. Um, However, it wasn't actually, his, his clearance wasn't actually made official. Until the following day, mm-hmm. um, apparently, according to the newsletter, right before WWE publicly announced uh, the decision or d- that he was cleared. Um, so it seems like it, it was in those things that, you know, once the ball got rolling, rolling with uh, the doctors Maroon suggested and Maroon himself, it just seemed like bang, bang, bang. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he was good to go. Now, one thing, one thing you didn't mention this in the notes here, but is very interesting because we've talked about we talked about on the SmackDown recap episode um, how you know we all kind of sit on pins and needles in terms of ooh is he, is he is he okay? Apparently, according to the newsletter, after every match, yeah, I was going to get to that. He will get he will have impact. T- okay, I know, just, down well, I'm already saying it right now. Well, there's something else here. He's going to have impact testing, concussion protocols done more stuff on right his there. on his noggin. Yeah, well, it's done. I did it. I already said it, so it's done. All right. As far as the schedule. Randy Orton style schedule. Well, that's what Melzer was speculating, right. but uh, it's, it's unclear whether that's going to be the case or not. I was kind of hoping for a bit of a lighter schedule than that. Like, Larry, just do TV. And Randy Orton's never around. What are you talking about? Lighter schedule. Lighter schedule would be like Brock Lesnar. He gets weekends off. That's my understanding. Is Orton gets most weekends off, but he'll do the. That's a great schedule. The, man. Oh, yeah, it's great. The yeah. midweek uh, house shows, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess it'd only really be one, depending on your definition of weekend. Well, weekend is uh, Saturday and Sunday. Well, I mean, yeah, typically. But, I mean, if you consider Friday part of that, too, if Randy Orton considers Some fr- people do. I don't know why people do that. But, anyways, if, if that's the case, then he's only working really working Mondays and Tuesdays. Nice. <laughs> Randy Orton is. <laughs> right. For the most part, I think he does a larger house show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does the, the bigger house shows, yeah. But So, yeah, I mean, yeah, three days a week, and one of those is like a six-man. Two of those are a six-man tag or just a regular tag team match. Yeah. That's, that's I think that's smart. Oh, yeah. You know. It's smart to... Protect him as much as possible, um, early on at least, until to see how his, his head holds up. Um, but yeah, after after every single match, they're going to be seeing how his head holds up. You know, yeah. so after everything he does, we're going to be sitting on pins and needles. Like I wish they'd have like on tout, they would have like live, you know, or, or Periscope. They'd have like here it is. The, that would draw rate. That would draw ratings. Yeah, probably go would. to the network. Like Talking Smack is now, you know. Testing smack. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's to all test about, out his head. Yeah, we go after 205 Live, they go backstage to the medical evaluation. Have you ever read up on what impact testing actually is? No. Me neither. I was going to, but I didn't. I don't know what it is. Like, you know. Do they I know on the they si- don't x-ray your head every no, time, I don't think so. do they? I don't think so. That's bad for your head. <laughs> That's terrible for your um, head. Like on the sidelines of NFL games, you know, they'll, they'll check how your pup- pupils right, dilate. Right, right. Um, they'll ask you some questions like, where are you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, how many how many fingers am I holding up to test yeah. your see how your vision's holding up? Yeah. Um but I don't know if that's considered impact testing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I think that's just more just have a really basic test of cognitive function. Yeah. So it does sound I mean they're they're you know, they're taking the steps that they need to take. I don't know how long he didn't specify like how long the uh, until the WWE is uh confident that uh he's yeah. not getting concussed a lot. Oh, All right, the go. impact uh, this is from ImpactTest.com. The Impact Test is a computerized neurocognitive assessment tool to help licensed healthcare providers evaluate and manage suspected concussions. Um, what is the test for a concussion? Impact so it's computerized. Wrestling. So maybe there is some sort of 
Are we going to get an Impact test tomorrow when we go see Impact Wrestling? Well, that'd hey, be a by test the way, of my patience. Uh, so this is going up Friday morning, Friday evening. We're going to be in Newark, California for the Impact tapings yeah, man. at Big Time Wrestling. Um, and so if you're there, say hi. I think you got to watch a video to learn what it is. Impact. I don't have time to watch a video. Testing. This is from their website. Impact testing. I just want to know, like, no, this is this could be just called a uh, uh, Google search with Stephen Larson. <laughs> Little is known about. Let's see here to examine if my uh, yeah. I have no idea. All right, we'll do that in our own a lot time. Of big words We're wasting here. people's times here because yeah. they kept coming here to listen to us talk about wrestling, not about not droll on about trying to find out what, how to, an impact test is conduct, conducted. Like, do they initiate impact? Do they say, okay, how do you feel after No, you it's, not like, it's not like a, a, a car test dummy thing where they put them. It's nothing like that. <laughs> they have like two steel things that go, ding. I don't, think, like, I don't think that's what it is. Uh, I feel good. <laughs> feel good. <laughs> do it again. Did I pass the impact test? <laughs> you can do it harder. Yes, please. <laughs> put a bucket on his head and go, do, 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 do. I know. Oh, man. Say, yeah. do you see stars? No. no. Little, are there little birds flying around your head? <laughs> no. You're good. A giant, a giant thing. Oh, yeah. A giant welt. Like it. What? My dog's over there. You stop it. Stop it. I she think, just tried to talk to us again. Yeah, I think I think the more you talk to her, the more she's going to respond to you. Know. She talks back so much. Yeah, man. Anyways, she know you know where she needs to go. She needs to go into the lake of reincarnation, Larson. Talk about our next story. Yeah, more deletions, maybe perchance. <clears throat> Who knows? Anyways, Russell Zone had an exclusive report about the reception of the ultimate deletion. Deletion and incident backstage in WWE. That's what they had to say. Quote, after speaking to a reliable source close to the situation, Russell Zone confirmed that there was a backstage belief in WWE that Vince McMahon was worried. Down there. Matt Hardy's ultimate deletion would bomb on Raw. Hold on a second. We were told that we heard that Matt, that Vince McMahon loved Matt Hardy. Yes. Why would he think it would bomb if he sent out like people to go shoot that stuff and have it as the main event of the show? And he had it as the main a big thing right there in your teeth. Mm. What a food! You're good. Yeah, it was a food. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I don't that. Was he just, I mean, sometimes you take a risk, even though it's against your better judgment, and maybe that's what they're talking about here. Or it could just be that, you know, he was being cautious in, as as far as approach of how it was going to affect ratings or how it was going to be received, but saying, yeah, we'll see how people take it is not the same as, oh, this is going to bomb, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's <was> good. <laughs> I like that you did the, the head shake. Oh, this is going to bomb. Um, um, no, I know. I Look, I would I would think this. Maybe it was, hey, let's put it on for the main event because we put a lot of effort into this thing. And also, the numbers of the third hour aren't as good as the first two hours. But and, and why, like, I don't want anybody to give me any, ex- no excuses. We're giving this the main event slot. If it bombs, we know that it's not going to work. Yeah, we know we don't do it anymore, but if it succeeds, and apparently it did, because, again, according to WrestleZone, um, it was the number one wor- trend worldwide for over two hours, Whoa. and and that segment managed to retain over three million viewers. Which Raw is, has had a hard time doing. Yeah, lately. as I mentioned earlier, usually the third hour is when viewership starts to dip. Oh, another another quick thing on the ratings. We were kind of like off camera when we the, we got the SmackDown ratings. Oh yeah, they were up. We were kind of poo pooing it a little bit, but I didn't realize that it was actually it's like best rating since the draft. Best and ratings of the year, and it's third best rating since it since SmackDown came to USA. Yeah, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Um. So, so well, like in numbers and raw numbers, like a hundred thousand num- uh, viewer increase. But I remember hearing that the week prior was up significantly mm-hmm. from the week before that. Mm-hmm. So the fact that it held and gained another hundred thousand yeah, yeah, is a pretty yeah. big deal. Yeah, it is. It's so just while we were talking about ratings. Um, the Russell Zone quote can also confirm that it was a struggle to get the ultimate deletion on WWE programming, but following the success of it, uh, uh, this could be Hardy's foot in the door to produce more content like it. I hope so. He recently said that he would delete Vince McMahon. <laughs> See, I, I'm really glad that it did really well. It is. Um, it was different. It was fun. Uh, there are any number. We were originally, our count out this week for tomorrow was going to be top 10 matches that should happen at the Hardy compound, like more deletions. Um, And then Daniel Bryan got cleared and was like, no, we're going with the dream matches. Yeah. Because that's going to do well. Yeah. So, um, but no, this is that, that's, that's really good. Like, I don't know. It, it's, it's, if, if the whole Vince like being skeptical about it thing is true 
it kind of once again illustrates. I mean, they brought record ratings to Impact for the, the time on that channel. Yeah, for Final on. Deletion. Yeah, so I mean, you you would think this is what people have been clamoring for. I know. Like, why did you bring him over in the first place if you thought that kind of programming would bomb? I know. I th- I mean, it's weird. You know, I, look. People talk crap about dirt cheats, and oftentimes we have we regurgitate information that contradicts other information because mm-hmm. it's like why would he have brought him over here if he thought that that thing that made him popular again i know would bomb i know and then put it in the main event i know if he didn't want to do if he thought produce it, it at bomb. considerable expense right well at expense <laughs> well compared to impact considerable yeah. expense um well yeah i don't know i mean did, did the production value for final deletion was not that much or ultimate deletion was not that much higher than the final deletion. well like the, the i'm matt, pretty sure it's just like jeremy borash and Rebby hardy again doing matt, what they were doing the matt hardy hologram on vanguard it one looked better looked much better it did that did actually look much better that was impressive the ui for vanguard one looked a bit better yeah but that's not but it looked very it was very reminiscent of the the terminator ui oh, they sure. had for yeah. wrestlemania 31 yeah so that looked very Could much like a WWE a template production. that they had yeah entirely possible could have been but I mean, no, you know, it takes resources and man hours to do that stuff. So I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying, you know, I, I thought it was great. That was yeah, fun. I thought it was tons I want, of fun. I want more deletions. Same. I want all the deletions. All the deletions. Seth Rollins deleted. Yeah, broken Seth. That'd be fun. Broken Seth. Anyways, uh, ooh, this is a cool. This is talk about talk about great things. Like yeah. The final ultimate deletion. Yes. Great Royal Rumbles maybe, maybe at some on point, the WWE they'll Network. Have the greatest deletion. Yeah. Anyways, according to PW Insider, the greatest Royal Rumble, of course, which is going to be emanating from Saudi Arabia, I want to say April 27th. WWE apparently made a lot of money on this. Yep. Will be available on the WWE Network. According to PW Insider, one of their readers noted that, quote, we, he, sorry, he went to cancel his WWE Network subscription. And when he did, a screen pointing out all the future live programming <laughs> that would be on the network came up, including a listing for the greatest Royal Rumble, and PW Insider was able to corroborate uh, that themselves by also trying to cancel their subscription. I thought, <laughs> that's good. Everybody try to cancel your subscriptions, see if we can keep on confirming this. Yes. I swear to God, I thought Roman Reigns said that the greatest Rumble was going to be on the network, too. I could be totally Did you get an wrong. email from him saying that? Uh, oh, it was a DM. He slid into my DM. Whoa. He's, he's saying, saying, big dog saying, here. This, this is my yard. He's like, do you hear I'm going to win the greatest Royal Rumble of all time? I was like, no, Roman, really? He's like, yeah. Well, that's kind of a spoiler. He's trying to give us a scoop. You can watch Um, it. uh, Anyways, but Sky Sports uh, just announced today on Thursday that, it quote, it has been confirmed the greatest Royal Rumble will be shown live on Sky Sports Box office and full details on how you can see the show will be revealed in due course. And then Lawler, on his podcast, uh, said that himself... And JR, Jim Ross, will reunite, Jeez. provide commentary for the show, wow. and that it will air live. Ah, I was right. Sports Kita has. On, on live television in Saudi Arabia. Uh, let's see. Roman Reigns was a guest on uh, Jim Norton and Sam Roberts' uh, show on Sirius XM. And uh, he said, uh, you know, I don't like how Sports Kita breaks down. I really show. like your slid into your DM story better. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have lied. But we kind of can't do that anymore. Uh, he said he's, and amongst other things, seemingly confirmed the greatest Royal Rumble will be available for fans around the world in WWE Network. Why don't they have a, a quote here? I wanted to listen to something. Oh, here we go. Wrestling. Let's see if Wrestling Inc. has has it better. Let's see who wins. Wrestling Power Inc. Wrestling Inc. versus Sports <laughs> Kita. Yeah, thank you, Wrestling Inc. for actually giving us the quote. What's the quote? Big dog. We have South Africa and Saudi Arabia with the greatest battle royal of all time. So that's going to be huge. Hopefully, I'm not giving away spoilers here. Breaking news happening now. But I think it's going to be a huge WWE Network special. Uh Even something else if he was like, no, it's not. It's no, it's not going to be on the network. Oh, my bad. Big dog. I know. Now it has to be because Roman said it. It's my my yard, Vince. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Exactly. It's my production truck. When I say it goes. Big dog. Big dog. So, yeah. Uh, they also said they're trying to get... Um, this doesn't say it here, but I heard they're trying to get Jericho and Undertaker for yeah, it. Yeah, saw that too. Because it is... Oh, I think it was the newsletter. Because it is the greatest Royal Rumble of all time. Yeah. The, you know what's going Why gonna, not aim higher? Stone Cold, CM Punk, The Rock. Well, title shot. Shawn Michaels. Realistically, title shot. They're not going to have a title shot attached to this Rumble. Why not? Because it takes the air out of the actual Royal Rumble. Nah, it's just a one-time thing, man. 
This is the greatest Royal Rumble. I understand that. Well, then you should have a greater prize than a title shot. A title. A new title. Ownership of the company. Ownership. <laughs> well, that's going a bit much. Um, they should make up a new title. The greatest Royal Rumble. The greatest champion. The greatest champion. <laughs> yeah. The greatest champion. It's cross brand. Yeah. There you go. Sort of like my universal title idea. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, every year is like the King of the Ring tournament, and then once a year, the universal title is defended. The greatest rumbler. <laughs> Yeah. The guy who rumbles the best. Great champion. <laughs> Great champion rumbler. Great championship built. They make a Roman Reigns title and just put it on him. Oh, I know. It's just the, the, this, this is my yard title. Yeah, exactly. you got a chunk of yard. Well, they take some AstroTurf, and that's what straps me mm-hmm. out of. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. We should do that on 2K18. Yeah, it's easy to do. They have that. Oh, that's a good idea. What? This is my yard title? Who's he fighting in Armenia? Cassisono? Yeah. For a spot in the Shield? Yeah. All right. Good. Good. Yeah, let's uh, talk about somebody who's not going to be the greatest Royal Rumble. Well, you never know. He might be. He might be. He might be. Uh, More from Pro Wrestling Insider as they report that despite his recent injury and despite recently gaining an ownership stake in Arrow Lucha, quote, several (laughs) WWE sources have indicated that Rey Mysterio will be traveling to Birmingham, Alabama later this week in order to have his partially torn bicep checked out in advance of Mysterio potentially signing a new WWE deal. I'm not stuck on the Arrow Lucha thing. I just think it's funny. It is funny. No, no, um, that's why I'm kind of stuck on it too. It's just hilarious. Yeah, I know. Um, so it seems like it's still full bore on Ray signing with WWE, assuming they can come to an agreement on uh, the schedule that he will be working. Yeah. Of course, you have to allow time for him to oversee his duties at Arrow Lucha as uh, part owner. You know, when you're an owner of a company, I can I can tell you, I've been an owner, I've been a co-owner of this company, and I own my own comic book publishing company. It's a full-time job. A couple of years ago. Um, no, not the comic book thing. Uh, that was a part-time job, because I needed a full-time job to finance it. Yeah. Uh, to throw money at it and not see anything in return. Yeah. This company is a full-time job. We don't need, thankfully... We don't I mean, need a part-time WWE schedule we don't need a part-time. to supplement our income, is <laughs> exactly. what you're saying. Because there would be no show if that were the case. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's cool. Arrow Lucha is not going to get in the way. Doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like it. So I wonder how often he would be wrestling for Arrow Lucha, um, first of all. Because I think that was part of the deal, was he'd be part owner and also perform at times. Yeah. He's that's got my a $20 stake in the company. Yeah. Um, but also, I, I'm, I'm starting to uh, like that WWE is is not so stringent on seeing that their performers are exclusive to them. I mean, if you're a full timer, yes, but if you're a part timer, in the case of Jericho, you know, if you're if if you're willing to do short term deals or buy appearance deals, go work elsewhere. It's kind of a bigger deal, like in sort of personally, it's to me, I like it better that it's a it's a bigger deal for the UK guys. Um, are we talking about the UK thing? Oh, I didn't have add it in here, but we can, yeah. Okay. So, like, yeah, we'll just dovetail on the UK thing. Um, the Wrestling Observer also has a fairly extensive write-up on the fact that the WWE um, seemingly still has plans for a UK show of some type and some sort of training facility mm. um, or even, like, a temporary training facility um, in the UK. Um, they signed uh, Zach Gibson, who was gonna be um, that name the, sounds familiar? He was gonna be the centerpiece for Five Star Wrestling, oh. but then they tanked. They yeah, went under. Yeah, yeah. They had problems. There's in the latest Botch Mania. There's a lot of great Five Star Wrestling stuff, including a guy seemingly trying to wrestle while completely concussed. Um, but uh, yeah, it seems like Zach Gibson's gonna be. He, he, I think he just signed a deal too. And then their big five: Mark Andrews, Wolfgang, Pete Dunne, Trent Seven, and uh, Tyler Bate all had uh, their deals um, financially uh, increased. Yeah. Um, I mean, they were making kind of pennies, to be honest. They were making like around 20000 a year, which is why they were able to go out and do yeah, other yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. because they have to make actual money. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, he said in one case, um, and he didn't specify who Pete Dunn, um, it went from 20000 to 50000 Even still for Pete Dunn, that's... Yeah, Not enough. But, yeah, but he can. can I, I agree. I agree. If he's full time with the WWE, but the fact that he can still go out and do, considering how he often he's on other, NXT these days, I wonder if that's going to start to change, though. Yeah, maybe that could be. Um, so, but that's fifty thousand downside. Mm, yeah, from WWE, and I don't know how many people have bought that shirt that they put out of, of Pete Dunne. That's not very good. I they will can almost guarantee just as easily go to his awesome uh, big cartel. He uh, probably he probably made more money off of his big cartel shop than he did off his WWE contract. 
like Possibly. last year. That wouldn't surprise me at all yeah. because number one, those shirts were amazing. Yeah. And number two, he was talking about those things selling out. Yeah. If that dude did a run of like a thousand of them, then that alone is about his WWE contract. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Assuming he cleared twenty bucks each. Mm-hmm. So. So. Uh, so that's that's cool. That's good. I mean, uh, it's sort of a they've had dates booked in the past that they just let drop because they didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. It's I suppose it's possible, but the fact that they re up those guys, signed on a couple of new guys, because I think it was Zach Gibson, I think one other person, I forget who, um, indicates to me that they're still they're still, it's still in the plans. Them. Still in the plans. I know, I kind of enjoy having Pete Dunn on NXT. Yeah, me too. I know. Kind of want him to stay there. I know, me too. And like I kinda don't I mean, I like I, I would love to have like another a UK show. Yeah. But at this point, Pete Dunn should be like the Oscar of that show. Like he just sort of shows up every once in a while. Give him like a mid card belt, like a Northampton belt. All right. I have no idea. I don't know what's like a Wales belt. A well a Welsh belt. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Because like NXT is gonna have their belt. Yeah. You know? They're gonna have their like Welsh belt. All right. The King of Wales title. I wonder if any of the UK guys are Welshmen. Yeah, Mark Andrews. Oh, he's a Welshman. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. Good job. Look at you. Or a Scottish title. Isn't Wolfgang a Scottish guy? I believe so. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Scots title. Yeah. I don't know. For each territory. Yeah, that's good. Several mid card belts. Yeah. Anyways. And if you win them all, then you're the, you're the United Kingdom. Then you're champion. the United Kingdom because it's the United. Yeah. Right. You have to unite all the belts. That's good. An English title. What, and then, like, what, Northern Ireland? Is that what it is yeah. also? But then not Ireland properly. No, Ireland's its own country. They're their own thing. Yeah. Anyway. It's good stuff. Uh, on to other good stuff. We're hoping Strong Style Evolves happen this weekend. Unfortunately, Rey Mysterio is not going to be there because uh, he is injured. However, a uh, uh, someone from the United Kingdom will be taking his place, and that person is well, Will Ospreay. Good job. Is, uh, is replacing Rey Mysterio in the match against Jushin Thunder Liger. Be honest with you. You can say it. That actually increased my odds of going. I'm definitely going now. Yeah, well, you were going before. Well, no. That was never a doubt. No. I said, once I found out that there was a Roscoe's in Long Beach, or once I remembered and was reminded that there was a Roscoe's in Long Beach, that brought my odds up significantly into like the mid-80s. And then I was holding out for the winner of the New Japan Cup, Zack Sabre Jr., Found out he's going to be there in tag action. Yeah, with his with his uh, stablemate and mentor. Not really. Oh, uh, Suzuki. Suzuki. Yeah. Well, I get kind of. Well, I don't know. No, not really. I guess he is to Suzuki. I think as uh, Switchblade is to Okada. All right. A, a strong signing of a younger dude. Yeah. But not necessarily a mentor. But I guess during this time, he's probably kind of learning, learning. from Suzuki. Yeah. That's a mentorship. At least in kayfabe. Of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure for reals he's too. Yeah, man. probably. Are you kidding me. Have but a, not like a full on reasons. mentorship program. Right, no. Not like an official paperwork stuff. No. No, I agree with that. But it should be a Wait, lot of fun. Wait, an episode of Seinfeld when there was mentors and protégés, there was no paperwork filed. That you know of. That was filmed. You don't know that. Well, I mean, I assume they would have talked about that. Paperwork's boring, man. It is boring. So yeah, Will Ospreay versus Jushin Thunder Liger. I think that, that's like that's that's amazing. The main event is fantastic. We're about to do predictions. Yeah, I just did all this. Good job. <clears> There's a lot of matches. Line. We don't have to do uh, confidence points for this one. No, no, I don't want to do confidence points for that. All right. So here's the card. We're going to go, down, go through the card and predict the outcomes of these matches. First, <clears throat> are any titles on the line? Uh, the United the US, States title? U.S. title. That's it. Um, Rapongi 3K. Who's currently the tag cha- champions? Is it? Uh, uh, it's uh, Evil and Sonata. Oh. But Evil's still out hurt. Who's the six man? It is... is it still Bullet Club? Is it the Hung Bucks? No, they're six men in Ring of Honor. Oh. I think it's uh, uh, <laughs> Fale and then Grill of the Destiny. <coughs> gotcha. And then junior heavyweight tag champs are uh, Kanemaru and Taichi, I believe. Anyways, for Pongi 3... Wait, three- what? It's not showing you anymore? No. It's who? Uh, Suzuki- Suzuki-gun. Kanemaru and Taichi. Oh, Taichi's great. It's so hard to keep up with it. I know. Uh, anyways, Rapongi 3K and Rocky Romero taking on SoCal Uncensored. Not the website. No. Which I used to... I'm amazed that... Well, okay, I'll put it this way. I am pleasantly surprised that SoCal Uncensored it's is still around. Still I know. Yeah, I know. And it looks the exact same as it did before. 
20 years ago, I used to follow that page. Yeah. 20 years ago. What? I love when you do that. It cracks me up because you're so not subtle about it. Um, My vision is not that great. I'm getting old, man. Showing you what's going on over here. You think it's for Pongi 3K and Rocky Romero? Okay, so um, SoCal Uncensored is Daniels, Kazarian, and they have like 100 years between the two of them. Scorpio Sky. And another 50 years. So, yeah, I think. The guys that are actually in New Japan are going to go over in this match. Uh, it's, this match taking place in Southern California. I'm going with SoCal Uncensored. Doesn't make any sense because none of the three guys in SoCal Uncensored have anything to do with New Japan. I know. Which anyway, is, why are you? Why are they're not? They're not going over. You're crazy. Because I mean, I, I do appreciate your logic. Your territorial, <laughs> Such as it is. Your territorial logic. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm calling. I'm, I'm making that pick. But Next. you know, a lot of people are flying in from this. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm aware. All right. Including SoCal and Censor. Yes. Um, uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Gato and Hiroki Goto. Hold on. I'll never forget. I need to find it on YouTube because we could do like a reaction thing to it. The Backyard Wrestling documentary where Christopher Daniels shows up and he's like judging everybody. Oh, yeah. And he come, But he shows up in like his trench coat looking like the Fallen Angel. Yeah, you I know? know. I know. It's like, are you in character or not? I can't tell. It's a documentary. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Gato and Goto versus Juice Robinson and David Finley. Well, Gato really likes Juice Robinson and Finley, so they're so going over. And because Gato's the booker, he's the king guy there. And yeah, you're I not. Wish. He's not going to put himself over. No, young but he talent. put he put uh, the never open weight champion Hiroki Goto over. Is he still the never open weight yeah. guy? I think he and uh, Juice are going to have a feud for that belt. Oh, okay. So I'm picking. Oh, my, you're insane. You're eh, 0 for 2. There's no confidence points. This is, for, this is just for fun, Steve. <laughs> I know. Next, Chuck Taylor, the best follow in wrestling Twitter. This is probably my favorite tag team of all time. Although, did you hear, did you see the Okada gif where he said, yeah, yeah, me yeah. and Chuck E.T. are revolutionizing tag team wrestling? I know, great. I love that. I love Okada so much. I know. Like, Chuck E.T. is like the newest, basically the newest yeah. member of Chaos. yeah. And he's embraced. And well, Okada's sticking it to Trent. I know. That's what he's doing. I know. It's great. Anyways, Chuck Taylor and Yano versus Killer Elite Squad. I'm hoping far enough into the stands not to get any of Lance Archer spit on me. Oh, I need to tweet at Lance Archer. Fine, go ahead. I'm going to tell him. Go ahead. I got to find your seats first. Kids. <laughs> Killer Elite Squad. Kids. Oh, man. Yeah, I can't. There's no other. There's no other way this can go. Killer Elite Squad wins. Although Chuck Taylor, former current PWG champion, mm, it doesn't matter, dude. All right, doesn't matter. This I'm using the same logic as why SoCal Uncensored isn't gonna. All right, fine. Doesn't matter. They're from LA. Next, a very interesting match: Cody Rhodes and Marty Skrull against the Gorillas of Destiny. Bullet Club is not fine, contrary to popular belief. No, it's not. Uh, but I feel like Rhodes and Skrull need to pick up a win yeah, at some point. Here. Because they just keep on getting. So, yeah, it's going to be them. How much kissing is going to happen in this match? I, I don't feel, know. I feel like Tama Tonga might, might be kissed by Cody or Maybe. Marty Skrull. Maybe. I feel like that's going to happen. It could happen. This will be a fun. This will be a really interesting dynamic. It'll be a lot of fun. I know, I know, I know. Uh, next, Taguchi Japan. So, you got Taguchi, uh, Tanahashi, I think Dragon Lee um, taking on LIJ. No evil, though, I don't believe. Right. So it'll be... Naito uh, Sanadabushi. And Takahashi, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, taking time bombs there, too. Wait, how many people are in this match? Do we know? I think it's four and four. Four and four, okay. L-I-J. Oh, I love the ticking time bomb. It's LIJ, man. Yeah, man, sign me up for LIJ, of course. Don't even, that's not even a question. And Naito's going to get one of the biggest reactions. Oh, yes. People love him, man. Yeah, he's, he's, he's awesome. Osprey wins against Liger. Hold on a second. What's your logic on that? I mean, he's a champ. It's a non-title match, but still, he's a champion. It's a non-title match. So. I understand that. Let me ask you this. If it's Liger versus Mysterio, who is going over? This is different. That's two legends. I understand. This is a legend and a, and a younger guy. And this is like a, a celebration as opposed to anything that matters. I understand that, but also Liger is usually in matches with young lions these days. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll split with you on this one. I'll say Liger. Wow. 
Next. I have more confidence points in this than I do in SoCal on Oh, if, if you're doing over. confidence points, that'd be zero. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. Anyways, Chaos, Okada, and Ishii taking on Saber and Suzuki. You know what's the, the most fun about doing predictions on New Japan is that like we barely are even able to keep up with it. I know. And so it's like our logic is so, so flimsy. I so bet. flimsy, exactly. Non-existent, in fact. Oh, man. Um, I'm saying uh, oh, yeah, it's, Saber yeah, and Suzuki. Yeah, it's Saber Suzuki, and this is going to be a freaking phenomenal match. I know. This is going to be outstanding. I know. God, man, four of my favorite guys. Are you kidding me? It's going to be great. I need to get a Zack Sabre Jr. shirt, like pronto. I already have one. Good job. I bought it from the man himself. And didn't he, uh, did you show him a picture of Zoe, of your no, dog? No, I should have, though. You should have. I'm sure should've. he would have really appreciated hand. it. That's good. Yeah. But, you know, going on further and saying, you'll appreciate this, Zach. It's my baby. Look at my awesome pug. Look at my baby. Look at my human baby, and it's a picture of Zoe. Look at my awesome dog. Yeah. Next, Jay White, the U.S. champ, taking on Hangman Page. Jay White winning. So they're not going to have a title change hands at this thing. I don't think so. Jay White just won this thing. I know. It's not going to go back to Hangman. No, go back. He's never had it. I mean, it's not going to go back to Bullet Club. No. Yeah, Jay White. Wins. Jay White wins, and finally, our main event: the Golden Lovers. Kenny Omega, Kota Ibushi versus Young Bucks. I'm going Golden Lovers. It's got to be Golden Lovers, but man. When are the – like the Young Bucks are moving to heavyweight. Yeah. They, this, is, this is a heavyweight tag. Yeah, match. I know. Is it going to be an easy transition for Young Bucks? Evidently not. All right, you, you're going Golden Lovers? I don't know. Well, you better make up your mind because I put Golden Lovers there. And we can't move on to answer questions until that's finalized. People are going to boo the crap. They can't. They're not going to leave on booing. It's Golden Lovers. Yeah. Yeah, it's Golden Lovers. Even though I think it'd make more sense for their first matchup to be the Young Bucks winning. Anyways. Anyways. But, boy, that's going to be a oh, that's gonna boy. Be a barn burner. That's going to be a hell of a match. You want to answer some questions? How many uh, – did they say how many tickets this sold? 5,300, I think. Oh, is that it? Okay. Yeah, oh, I so. okay. I okay. think so. The Cow Pals is the one that might – Yeah, if that show happens, it's going to be a ton. And that's supposed to be – okay. When do the all-in tickets go on sale? May is what I heard. Okay. Yeah. If New Japan can crack 10,000 at the Cow Palace, if that actually happens – I'd have to think All In can crack 10,000. Mm-hmm. At least for their the first time they do it. I don't mm-hmm. know if they're going to make it a yearly thing or not. Yeah, Putting on no. a show is probably a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah. I mean, if they're, the whole motivation behind doing the show is just to prove Dave Meltzer wrong. They're going All In yeah. on the one show. Yeah. All right. Question time. Question time. I put this call out on the Twitter. So keep an eye on our Twitter, at RealGoingInRaw. Every uh, Monday and uh, Thursday I usually post these. Question. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Gustavo Topetti. Do you think Daniel's still going to leave uh, WWE when his contract is up or not? No. I'd be very surprised. WWE still gives him the largest platform. I would, however, work. think that there is no way in hell he's going to be like, you're not, gonna, you're not allowed to freeze my contract anymore. He's got all the leverage in the world now. Yeah. So I'm sure that he'll probably adhere to all the concussion protocol stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I doubt they would they would waffle on that, but I'm sure he'll probably say, "If you don't clear me, I want a clear path out." Yeah. Uh, hopefully for him, he'll sign a one year deal. Let's do it year year by year. Yeah. And then yeah, if if put a clause in there that if if he's not cleared, then the contract is voided. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Something uh, like that. Oh, what a great question from Stee. They call me Stee. What female superstar? Could do a male superstar's gimmick better. Kind of has me stumped on this one. Yeah, me too. Sasha Banks could do Demon Valor better than Finn Balor. 
Well, she has a mask on. That's why you're saying that. Look, perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something Shayna Baszler could do. Oh. She could do. Oh, Baron Corbin. <laughs> What is his gimmick exactly? Lone Wolf End of Days. Lone Wolf End of Days. <coughs> that's actually, no, that's actually a really good one. That's actually a really good answer now that I think about it. Well, good job. Well done. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Doc McThuggins wants to know, what veteran do you think deserves a thank you title run? Do you think Goldust should have like... They should have given Goldust and Cody the tag titles and then seen Goldust on his way. I thought they did win. The oh, did they? I thought they did. He should have been done after that. You're right. They did. What veteran should be given a, a thank you title reign? Well, is if this was Randy Orton's thank you United States title reign, yeah. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. How about this? What? Let's say in a year this Woken Matt Hardy stuff really takes off. Give Matt Hardy a WWE title reign. He's never won the top title. There you go. That works. Yeah, That's it really takes say. off, yeah. Uh, Billy Smith, when Aleister Black goes to Maine, where does he go? Raw. Yeah. And who is his first opponent? He'll probably have it be Bray Wyatt. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Uh, Samoa Joe. I'll say Samoa Joe. Or if he goes to SmackDown, it'll be Dolph. Exactly right. God damn it. No being off to Raw just to have <laughs> Alistair Black's first feud. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, Sean. Sean Tendo 82. With Daniel Bryan cleared when the draft occurs, do you think, what do you think WWE's going to do? Keep him on SmackDown or move him to the A show? I hope they keep him on SmackDown. Yeah, me too. Keep him on SmackDown. I want to deal with all those monsters over there. I know. They got to set up for for Just, Nakamura Bryan. SmackDown needs to be the wrestler show. Like, yeah. they, they need to pull the trigger on that. I mean, yeah. Kind it need, of it needs bit. a more defined identity. Yeah, exactly. Not just other blue show. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Ooh, good question. Tim Spulak. If you had to make a faction with Daniel Bryan as the head of it, Mm. Who would be in it? Ooh. What show would they be on? Who would they Smack take on? Down. And why would it be Balor Club? <laughs> um, that's what he says. Uh, yeah. Move move Balor Club to SmackDown. Yes. Have AJ join up with them. Okay, yeah. Um, and then it'd be Daniel Bryan. Yeah. How about this? Here's an idea. Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. Kevin Owens. Yeah, okay, yeah. Sami Zayn. Oh, that'd be amazing. And then... Mount Rushmore Wrestling. Yeah, Adam, Adam Cole. And Adam Cole. And Adam Cole. Oh, be so good. Mount Rushmore Wrestling. That'd be so flipping good. That'd be good. Uh, <clears throat> Justin Wern. What crowd chant needs to be retired more? The what chants? It's the what chants. He said, or CM Punk. It's the what chants. Yeah, well, absolutely. What chants Those are sure. infuriating at this point. Yeah, um, what chants need to stop? Let's see here. Oh, no. I lost it. You messed it all up. I lost it. There we go. Here we go. Um, oh, man. what a, This is my favorite question of all time. What is it? If WCW still existed, who would be the champions today? Tim Storm. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Aldis and jo- jo- Josephus. Josephus will be the champion. Oh, man. Let me think. It's kind of business, what, 2001? Yeah. Like, oh, well, I mean, been, things have been completely different. Cody Rhodes would okay. be their champion. Okay. Le- leave WWE instead of going to Ring of Honor, go to WCW. All right. There you go. He's their champion. Good answer. And in the women's division, Emma Tennille Dashwood. Is yeah. That her name? yeah. Yeah. So you're just pretty much saying Ring of Honor would be WCW. Yeah, pretty much. So Cal Uncensored would be the tag <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. They have to be aware that it's a website, right? Oh, I know. You would think so. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I like this. Tony Tony D asks because I, I say I would say yes. Should Kurt Hawkins break his losing streak by winning the Andre the Giant Battle Royal? That'd be pretty funny. Yes, I think it'd be amazing. Like you've said this before. There's no stakes involved. They get a giant trophy. Who cares? Yeah. The crowd. You want to know who'll get the biggest pop for winning that thing? Kurt Hawkins. Kurt freaking Hawkins. That's who. Are you kidding me? <clears throat> then he can continue like a win streak on main event. Yeah. That could be the Kurt Hawkins show. Yeah. Um, at Trix203, could you see Johnny Gargano as WWE champion down the road? Really difficult for me to imagine that. WWE champion, maybe. If SmackDown is the wrestling show. Yeah, okay. Then yeah. If all things are equal, then maybe, yeah. Yeah. The way the brands are split now, be you'd have a harder time getting the Universal I'll Championship. I'll agree with that, yeah. I mean, the one thing... I went back... I think uh, Pachiti from Cultaholic tweeted out like a, a video, a, a promo that Daniel Bryan gave... When he oh he got eliminated from NXT right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. and it was great because he started to talk about uh, he says Daniel Bryan might be done but you haven't seen the last of uh, Bryan Danielson and it was just as good as he is now so smooth so personable and as much as I love Johnny Gargano Daniel Bryan is a once in a generation personality a guy mm-hmm. that you hear him talk and you instantly love who he is and wants. You want the best for him. Mm -hmm. Gargano is great, but that intangible charisma Daniel Bryan has, and you cannot replicate it. Mm -mm. Cannot. And that's why, you know, he's always in a conversation if he's an active wrestler. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, Oh, this is a good question. We will end on this one. All right. Jesse James Helsius. I was introduced to you guys when you were doing 10 for the win and instantly was hooked by your personalities. What was the vibe when you stopped working there? Was it scary or was it exciting starting a new chapter? Um, it was both. When we So when we got laid off um, and it was like the great unknown for like two weeks because then we got kind of brought back to produce some stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so we had like income after like, you know, when that happened again. Um, but for that initial, the initial moments, like I kind of realized that it, that was a necessary thing for us. If we wanted to really reach another level mm-hmm. where we weren't just making, you know, we'll be eligible for a couple percent every year in yeah, a raise yeah, or yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. If we wouldn't be in control of our own fates. Yeah. Um, but that being said, you know, the, especially when we were doing gaming stuff, it's such a, scary landscape because there's so much out there and it's so fickle yeah that it was it was kind of scary like are we gonna be able to do this like it it always it seemed like it seemed a little bit like mission impossible at first well we 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 kind of operate on the assumption that well with machinima we were known for the gaming stuff so we should do that even though i don't think either of us really that was really the direction we wanted to go in. Yeah, yeah. But we thought, okay, this is what we're known for, so this is what we got to do. And so we tried doing the gameplay stuff, but it just wasn't us. Yeah. It just wasn't us. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how we would have been able to to, to make it go with that, like, at all. We had to get on the ground floor or something like Fortnite. Even like, yeah, I know. Like, because the longevity factor when it comes to gaming stuff, it's like, man, you always have to be... Out in front of things. Out in front of things, you know? But at the same time, you don't want to... <clears throat> there's been numerous channels. For example, Minecraft. When Minecraft blew up and it, and it sent a bunch of YouTubers in the, in the stratosphere, immensely popular, and then you're stuck in a situation where either you just do Minecraft content for the rest of your life or you venture out and do other things and risk alienating that entire audience. But like doing Minecraft videos for ten years, that's got to be there's serious burnout and as, involved in that. As you can see, like it's not exactly like there's a lot of people booming at that still, mm-hmm. you know. So that's not even really. I don't even know. That's pot, like sticking with one game exclusively for ten years just yeah. seems pretty dubious. I know, you know. And on top of that, like, how old is that ninja guy? Is he like twelve, thirteen? Oh, I don't know. I mean, he's probably his early twenties or something. Yeah, yeah, thirty at most. Um, and then he's been doing it forever. And he makes five hundred thousand dollars a month. I know. Saw that on the TV. Yeah. Um, Thanks to the Fortnite, huh? But for every every one of him, 
there's thousands, oh, tens if not hundreds of thousands of of channels who are just struggling right now to even be monetized. I mean, we knew dudes back in the day who had like you know a million and more subscribers, and you know now they're doing hardly anything. Like so many people have washed out, and it's it's di- it's a difficult situation to look at that. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know, something like we figured it out. We know. kind of got into the pro wrestling scene, I think, at the right time before. You know, I mean, there were still there were channels operating, but it, I don't feel like there was as many as there are now. Oh, I don't, I think I still honestly I kind of think that I mean, even that I'm not sure of. Yeah, but it just felt like it was a matter of a couple of videos that really catapulted us. Yeah, yeah, that was that was kind you know? of different. Yeah, and then when we did. Uh, started doing the countdowns, the wrestling theme ones, and they were shorter, more like 10 for the win. Mm-hmm. They would do really well for yeah. us seemingly immediately. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true, yeah. So, but at the same time, I, I, I feel like if we started doing taking that approach to the countdowns now, scripted, shorter episodes, they wouldn't do the numbers they did back then. Yeah, I know. I mean, YouTube is weird that way. Like, I think it, I don't know. I mean, this is sort of a dry conversation, I guess, but, you know, it's the end of going in Ross, who cares? Um, or see end of the episode anyways. Um, the end of going and wrong. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. Um, I just, I kind of wonder if the YouTube algorithm like figures out what you do and like what you're known for and doesn't really, because so like the, I know it's scary, but it wouldn't surprise me because the Daniel Bryan daily news short, right? It was like two and a half minutes or something, yeah. right? We had done something like what blew us up in the first place was that page getting arrested video. Yeah. And did like 400,000 or something. Yeah. It did like crazy numbers. Yeah. And I agree. I don't think something like that could. I mean, we the the, uh, the one where like the what culture guys left that did a lot of numbers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, That's like the only I know daily one that actually short did, form that one that did any did good numbers of any consequence. And I just I just honestly wonder if YouTube looks at us and says, okay, well, you guys typically have a twenty, you know, whatever our watch time is, a, yeah. a longer watch time, a podcast level watch time. And then looks at a video that's like three minutes, and then after like twenty four hours, like okay, well, this isn't what you usually do, so we're not going to push it anymore. Could be. I have no idea. Algorithms are weird, man. Yeah, man, I don't get them. They're taking over the world. Um, the only person I trust with algorithm talk is Paul Ellery because he knows the algorithm. <laughs> he knows. He has the algorithm. I'm just trying to see where. Uh... Like yeah, Cultaholic got one hundred and ten thousand on Daniel Bryan. What did Russell talk do? Yeah, 157. Trying to see if that's our, what they're known for. Well, ours is, ours, are, ours is on the first page of search results, at least. That's what I was looking for. Oh, okay, yeah. But then, like, Wrestle Talk and Cultaholic, like, their, their thing, for the most part, I mean, I know they both have podcasts, but I think they're weekly. Oh, it's, their it's short thing form. Their short-form content. Yeah. So I think YouTube probably pushes that because that's what they do. Entirely possible. So it's a very sophisticated technology, yes. Anyways, that's it for the show. That's it. There's a little... Some YouTube primer, some YouTube education for you guys. Yeah, it's it's a constantly evolving landscape. Yeah. Put it mildly. It's a nightmare. It's a land. It's a minefield. Minefield, yeah. Talk to you guys later. Bye, everybody. <laughs>